haymakers, rushing in to explain or to blame. We need to bring moral meaning to our lives and make moral and ethical discernments. But sometimes our moral judgments are like an autoimmune disease. A system designed to protect against disease gets over-aggressive and destroys the body it is designed to protect. So here's a call for us to not rush in. To not rush in to make sweeping moral judgments. Especially where we try to bring God into the equation. Our judgments with so much self-interest built therein. Jesus calls us, calls us from making sweeping moral judgments to showing mercy, being merciful, having the property of mercy. In tragedy, Jesus asks us to listen to our own lives and to the spirit of God within us. There is some truth to the catchphrase, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. We heard a version of it in our epistle reading. Don't waste the pain. Don't waste the pain and refuse to grow. Allow the tragedy to make you stronger. Be good stewards of your tragedy. Life, you see, has a way of bringing us to our senses, getting us in touch with our best self, getting us in touch with God. Sometimes tragedy does it. Sure, there are other times, times that the misery level of our lives finally becomes intolerable and we know we must change. Times when we encounter such stunning beauty, goodness, truth, that we know we can no longer live as we have before. Like the poet Rainer Maria Rilke, who saw the ancient sculpture of the torso of Apollo and wrote down, you must change your life. The poet Keats wrote in a letter that this world should not be seen, as some did, as a veil of tears, but rather as a veil of soul making. Jesus turns to the crowd interested in speculating upon the political or upon others' lives and says, don't draw too quick a moral judgment. They are not dead and you alive because they were worse sinners than you or because you are more righteous than they. And then Jesus tells a parable, often used as a parable of judgment and turns it into a parable of mercy. There was this fig tree. The owner had it planted and waited until the time for it to bear fruit. He went there three years to pick its fruit, only to find it year after year bore no fruit. Six years, not a fig. The tree was barren, the situation hopeless. You and I might have already dug it up, the master says to the vine dresser, dig it out. Why should it take up the valuable place and exhaust the ground for nothing? Dig it out. How many of you have considered another person a hopeless cause? Given up on them. If they've not changed by now, they never will. Maybe you said words like that about yourself. But God is the God of lost causes, the cultivator of barren trees, the giver of second chances, third, fourth, fifth chances. So Jesus turns the parable in an unexpected way. In most stories like this one, the tree is dug up and thrown away. But in this one, the vine dresser says, Master, forgive it. Let it be this year also. Let me dig around it, spread some manure, and if it bears fruit in the future, well and good. But if not, dig it out. I think Jesus is saying, saying to us, 
on this very day. If you're sitting here right now, it is by the mercy of God. The time you have, the life you live, it is not under the judgment of God, but under the mercy. Use it. It's time to work the soil and spread the manure. By grace, you've been given this day. Spared by mercy. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, spared by mercy. And now we must live by mercy, and grace will lead me home. Spared by mercy, and now we live by mercy. By mercy, the inconceivable mercy of God. And mercy has many facets. We will live by gratefulness. How can we not? For all we've been given, be grateful. How can we not be grateful for all God has done for us? And we will live by kindness. As God is kind to us. Henry James once told his nephew, there are three things important in life. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. The third is to be kind. And mercy is also about active good works. Active good work which make life better for those around you. Not not as a way of earning your salvation, that's already yours by grace, but rather as an expression of your salvation, as an expression of God's saving love to all. Make the most of your days, be they long or short. Do some justice, love mercy, don't resent it. Walk humbly with your God. Fret not, judge not, fear not. Redeem the times. Anne Lamont tells a story about going to see her best friend in the hospital who was dying of cancer. At some point, Anne chatted on and on and said to Pam without really thinking, Do you think I will look fat in this dress? Her friend said, Anne, you don't have that kind of time. I think that's what our gospel lesson is saying to us. We don't have that kind of time. Spared by mercy. Let us live by mercy.